Good afternoon and welcome back to Plain Speak for our final episode of 2023 Bananas. Brian, it is so good to have you. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm so excited to be here. It's going to be a my, great uh, Yes. Got the end of year festivities going. I got the Zoom background and you got the sweater. We're bringing the holidays to you in this plain speak. I love it. Um, so this conversation is where we pick the brains of industry experts for a quick 30 minute chat on the intersections of technology and customer support. We learn from the best CS minds in e-commerce, fashion, medical, dating apps, meal kit delivery from brands like Lululemon, Everlane, Field, Gobble, Hip Camp, so many more. It's been an awesome 2023. And it's also been a huge pleasure learning from so many experts this year about how they create world-class CS departments and how all of our listeners can apply these to their own businesses. So in today's episode with Brian, we are rounding out 2023 by diving into the world of customer service automation over phone calls. I'm thrilled to introduce Brian Schiff, CEO and founder of FlipCX. Flip is tackling the channel that most of us somewhat loathe sometimes, getting stuck in IVR trees on the phone. So today, really excited to learn how Flip is styling in the future by bringing powerful automations, all the things that 2023 has been about, into customer support phone calls. So Brian started Flip when he was still a student at Cornell University, originally to improve you know, taxi transportation experiences, and then expanded that to include e-commerce a few years back. Flip's goal isn't just to automate calls, but instead to create a smart, helpful, and fun customer experience all over voice contact points. With over 100 integrations, including order management systems, Salesforce, Shopify, SMS marketing platforms, Flip's technology reflects a deep understanding of customer needs across generations with a surprising amount of voice assistant technology adoption among Gen Zers. So for those of you new to plain speak, I'm Liz Tai, CEO and founder of High Operator. We are a leading customer support automation solution that scales dynamically based on a company's evolving needs. Our proprietary customer support tools leverage NLP, workflow automation, generative AI to tackle even the most complex customer requests. Our products include an auto tagging tool highlight, AI, as well as High Auto, our fully automated CS solution. So as we get going here, a very quick housekeeping note. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to put them into the chat where we are watching this. If we don't get to them during this session, we will reach out and post answers on LinkedIn. So excited to get going for the last time in 2023. Brian, welcome. Tell me just a little bit about Flip CX and how you guys have revolutionized phone-based customer service in retail and e-commerce. Yeah. Um... Appreciate the, the intro there. Very excited to be here. Uh, as you alluded to, uh, we are the crazy people that are diving into the phone channel while everybody else is running away from it and um, taking those sort of uh, like the old school IVRs that everybody has experienced, right? You call customer service, you get press one for the billing department, press two for this. Um, sort of can twist any human's stomach that's been around for long enough um, and sort of ripping that out and coming in with a modern AI powered experience. Um, and yeah, specifically focused on, on the retail and e-commerce space, which has always been um, sort of a, a shared vision between your company and ours and uh, yep. excited to dive into some juicy topics today. Absolutely. It's been kind of a crazy nine months, I guess a full year pretty much since OpenAI came out with ChatGPT. And it's been crazy how much the customer service automation space has evolved during that year. Um, but maybe to dive in just for two seconds before that, Brian, you know, I love that we're relying on this mission of automated customer support, but tell me just a little bit about Flip, Cornell, and how you guys started with transportation first. Tell me about that journey. We started as a fintech yeah. company, so <laughs> very different, but tell me a little bit about your story there. Yeah. Um, so everybody's got sort of like right, the different motivations that come together that lead people to want to start a business. And I think that for us, it was we really – we were in school at the time and we really, really didn't want to get corporate jobs. And 
He felt that starting a business was a safe way to guarantee that that wouldn't happen. Um, and, and me and the founding team, I mean, we started sort of working together, trying different things, going all the way back to 2015. And then um, sort of like had a little synth there uh, when we were formerly known as Red Route, where we basically built like the Uber of Cornell, where we were going to school and like brought it to some other places. Had a ton of fun with that. Um, and then in 2017, sort of like looked around and we were getting ready to graduate. And it was like, okay, we got to, um, you know, figure something out here that's going to be real. And 2017 is right when, right? It's funny now, everything in AI is about ChatGPT. In 2017, everything was about Alexa. Um, yes. And we saw what was going on, what was going on there. And, and we sort of looked at that experience and we looked at the experience that you get when, when you call a business and we were like, that gap has to be bridged and, and why not us? Um, so we'd been doing stuff in transportation. We sort of uh, started out in that industry. It is still a huge part uh, of the business today. And then really? in, in two years, uh, in the last sort of two years or so, expanded into into e-com and uh, those are really our two sort of core verticals that we focus on. That is super, super cool. I love how that initial seed was a little bit of a, hey, how do we not get a corporate job? I feel like people often say, why high operator? And there's some part of it that's like, look, naive arrogance. Out of school, there is this excitement and you believe in the vision and you kind of just go for it, right? Yeah. Um, but that's also remember, really interesting. Uh, just one more tidbit there. I remember, so we went through, uh, Cornell has like unbelievable entrepreneurship resources. We went through their like e-lab e startup accelerator program. And um, the guy who named, who ran the program, Ken Rother, uh, who very close advisor and friend, um, I remember super early days, he said, you know that starting a business is like an eight to 12 year journey. Like, are you sure that you want to do that? <laughs> and I looked at him as like an 18 year old and I was like, ah, whatever. Sounds great. Let's do it. Um, but no, yeah. it's so true because I remember 2017 Alexa, which we'll circle back to, but it was all sort of the last time people had rediscovered natural language processing again. Right. And I remember we were at least for high operator, but to really maybe like, naive and arrogant, right? MIT engineers. And we were like, look, we'll soak up all the data. We'll, we'll automate this. We'll be done in a couple of years. How hard could automating customer support be to some extent? Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, you're right. That, that was Alexa. That was sort of the comeback of voice. And, you know, as a consumer growing up with smartphones, there definitely is sometimes the belief that phone calls are a little bit outdated, especially among the younger demographic. Double click a little bit on me on how Flip CX addresses this misconception and why you believe that, hey, phone calls actually aren't outdated. They play a very important role in you know, business consumer communications. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's been probably, right, probably around the same time, right, 2017 ish, was when everybody really started pushing like omni channel. Right. And yeah. that was like the thing in CX. And it was like, right, there was email and there was phone. And then it was like, okay, like let's start doing chat and like let's get people there. And agents can multitask and right be much more efficient, do a lot of conversations at once. Um, and my perception has always been that a lot of the move away from the phone has sort of been a narrative that's been driven by the classic customer support mindset of we want to cut costs any way that we can. And it's really been driven more by businesses and, and contact centers than it's been driven by consumers. I think that right in, in very sort of ground truth ways, like customer service, right? When, when a, when all of us in our consumer life need to reach out to customer service, I had to return something just today. Um, when, when you need to do that, like it's not a pleasure task. It's a task on your to-do list that you need to get taken care of. And 
whenever you're talking about task completion, like the goal is to get it done as quickly as you can. Um, and that's always lent itself very well to voice because right voice is the fastest way of communicating. Yeah. Um, so there's always been that like inherent reason why voice made so much sense. There was just the fact that, Hey, there's this new technology. We can do it a different way. And, um, like it's also happens to be way cheaper. And like our number one motive is just cut, 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 cut. So let's just pile everything uh, into sort of that sort of messaging and strategy and product. Um, and even the data now is like way more balanced and even phone leaning than, than people expect. We see brands that start their phone journey with flip. They don't offer phone support and then they turn on, they start publishing a phone number with flip as okay. the front door to that. And they're stunned at the amount of volume, like, Basically, immediately, if you get it on your website, if you get it in your kind of like customer journey, touch points. Um, and then the last piece of it is the uh, the idea that it's dying and that like Gen Z and like Gen Z, like young people don't want to talk uh, and they just want to like text and whatever. Um, I don't have it like exact studies in front of me, but I know that there's like a ton of data that all of the adoption of these like Alexa experiences and also like Siri and uh, yeah. like voice notes and like e voice in every mechanism, there's huge adoption from young people. Um, so I guess that would be no, a couple minutes spiel on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause you're, you're, and I feel like there's actually something sort of deeper here, which is for, for a while, but in the absence of technology and automation that we'll talk about more in a little bit, providing customer support is actually really hard for brands and it used to be a little bit of a zero sum game, right? Where I think you're right in some of that and a lot of that where it's like, look, why did we take away phones? Was it really because it was good for the consumer or was it because it was better for the brand and more scalable? And, you know, one push comes to shove and we're in Q4 like we are today and volumes are going through the roof. How do you as a business affordably service that without you know, 10 xing your workforce, which isn't a good business decision, is not a good operational decision. And in a world without technology and automation delivering some of those efficiencies, you kind of are between like a rock and a hard place, right? Yeah. How are you going to scale all of those things? You're yeah. going to push to cheaper channels, you're going to deflect, you're going to hide. And it's actually really cool saying, hey, if you took all of that away and you reset the customer experience, what does that look like, right? Yeah, I, I think that the 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 word the specific words you used of like stuck between a rock and a hard place is exactly sort of on the money from my perspective right a lot of times for the consumer you have a bad experience with customer service and you jump to right like the the instinct is to blame that customer service team and like the leader of that team in theory and and I do think that it's been a, a rock and a hard place and like a bad situation. And there's like there's all there's all these things about like the amount of money that's been spent on CX technology in the last like 10 years. And yet, like all the far reaching studies on consumer satisfaction have just like gone down in terms of uh, what consumers are feeling the quality of service is. Um, yeah. and it, yeah, it's, it's sort of this, like, like, in a it, it's a simple, like supply demand situation where like, there's too much volume coming in for too few agents. The business can't viably start spending like, right. They can't just double the size of the workforce from a business standpoint. And if it was happening to like one or two companies here or there, then it'd be like, Hey, why haven't you guys figured this out yet? But when it's, it's the whole industry. It's the whole industry. It's the whole industry, right? Like you don't need to say like, oh, have you ever called so-and-so and had a bad customer experience? Like you can kind of just say like, have you ever had a bad experience calling customer service? And basically everybody can answer that with a yes. Um, and it's really not the fault of the CX leader. Like they, right? they don't control the amount of contacts and it's like they don't control the budget that they have. Um, yeah. They can't clone their agent for three months out of yeah. the year. Yeah, they, they got to like try and sort of 
find that soft spot between the rock and the hard place, I guess. <laughs> Exactly, um, which is why I think with all the generative and automation technologies this year, it's been really exciting to be able to sort of shift that paradigm a little where not only can it be cost effective and faster, it can actually be like tangibly measurably from a customer satisfaction perspective better. So maybe, you know, for anyone who has not experienced Flip CX Live, Brian, can you give us a little bit of, you know, what exactly happened? Like, what does Flip do when someone calls a brand that you work with? It's not a IVR press zero to try and get to the agent. What does that experience look like? Yeah. So you said at the top, smart, helpful, and fun. I think that that is sort of the North Star away from all things bad IVR and like towards experiences that people will enjoy. To me, smart is is the is the bot able to, right? Is the assistant able to like have a conversation with you and understand you and like do that? Helpful is, are you able to solve the problem, right? Like ultimately people are reaching out because there's something that needs to get done. Um, and are you able to do that, right? That's where the integrations are such a big piece of the puzzle. Um, yeah. And then fun, my feeling is, right? If you have been smart and you have been helpful, then you have earned the right to insert some brand experience component um, because at the end of the day, right, we're, we're the front facing um, sort of experience that customers are getting at a sensitive point in their journey. And yeah. there's an opportunity for that to, to be a, a brand moment. I was also going to double back just very quickly. So yeah. the, the emergence of automation and, and everything with AI and going back to like the rock in a hard place, I've always just felt that, right, if it's a supply and demand problem that is sort of the root of what's going on, then any solution that is not addressing that supply and demand imbalance is like not really solving the problem. So, right, it, I've always kind of looked at, right, if you're, if it's tools that are sort of optimizing the existing way of doing things, right, so it's like, hey, I'm going to like make the agent experience 5% better, or I'm going to make them 5% more efficient, or I'm going to do those things. Like you're really kind of optimizing towards a local maxima, which is very proven at this point to not be a good one. And yeah. the promise of automation has always been, Hey, if we can take all of the routine conversations that are happening and give those people a great experience in an automated way at a fraction of the cost of, our human, right, our precious human's time, then you're able to actually address that supply and demand. Um, so I think that that's always been like the, right, you got the rock in a hard place and automation is actually changing sort of like the math on that equation. Mm -hmm. And then the other sort of like next layer beyond that, which is a lot of where I see things going kind of heading into next year is like, People have talked about like turning a cost center into a profit center, right? How do you make these CX orgs um, like business drivers? Yeah. And, and for everybody that has been sort of wanting to do that, they've always been the same people that are very anti-automation. And yet I think that you can sign kind of like look not necessarily, right? you can look sort of a couple months, couple quarters out for what, companies like ours and yours are doing, you can see that like, hey, actually automation is probably going to be the pathway to driving business metrics beyond just driving down cost. And I think that that's sort of going to end up being an ironic fact that plays out over the next couple of years. I actually, I really agree with that because I think we're past the point of, hey, we're looking for a 3%, 5% optimization, right? It really is a bigger, sh bigger shake up. And, but I think part of that, it's actually really exciting for CX leaders because, you know, the, I think the rhetoric has been there about going from cost center to profit center for a long time, but the technology is just finally at the point to be able to demonstrate that ROI, right? And being able to demonstrate that ROI, I think is what gives CS leaders a seat at the table from a business perspective in a much larger way than they used to. And then that though, in order to do that, you sort of have to get off of the frontline treadmill 
and elevate your team like you're talking about, right? There are a lot of contexts where automation is going to produce a faster, cheaper, and better experience for the consumer. How do you leverage those? How do you elevate your team and really start to think through customer service, not as a one-on-one -on -one serial experience, but a designed experience the same way that, you know, marketing is a designed experience, right? Yeah. Because there are these bigger macro level levers that you can start to pull, not on a call by call perspective. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that you're hundred percent right. I love the word like orchestrating experiences at scale, mm -hmm. which is very sort of like marketing-y type language. Um, and, and I think that you're right. Like, I, I think that the, the very, I think that sort of tools are at a place right now, by and large, where they can solve that supply demand problem. They can give major relief to the amount of volume that's coming into the agents, which is going to improve all of your classic call center metrics around like hold time, missed calls, handle time, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it's going to allow you to save money at the same time. And like, that's a win in its own right. I think that the next stage that it's going to is this exactly what you're saying, where um, you're, you're moving business metrics, right? They can be yep. uh, retention metrics. They can be marketing metrics. They can be sales, right? Direct revenue contribution. It's always been astonishing to me, like over 20% of all calls that across our entire customer base are received are customers that are looking to make a purchase. Like really? I, yeah. It's, Why it's, would you not take those? Right. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. It's nuts. It's, it's <laughs> totally nuts. Um, so yeah, I think that there is the direct sales opportunity and that to me is, is stage two. And then stage three is going to be getting to a point where an organization can look at these conversations and say, we're getting, Right. Every time that we have one of these conversations with our customers, it's driving value. And yep. whenever something drives value, you want to do as much of it as you can. And mm -hmm. that is a huge paradigm shift, right? Like everything is like reduce volume, reduce volume, like hide, eliminate channels, eliminate hours, like yep. automate, right? Even automates in that bucket of like reduce, reduce, reduce. And it's going to sort of dive down and it's going to come up on the other side. And when it comes up on the other side, it's going to be, we are now orchestrating super rich and valuable conversations with our customers automatically at scale. And yep. the data shows that these conversations are driving business outcomes. So how can we have more of these conversations? And that is going to be a real sort of mind bender for the industry. That's exciting. And the other thing that's hidden in there that I think you just touched on is also this idea of being able to experiment, right? Like marketing gets to experiment. They can do different landing pages and do like A-B tests, all sorts of flows. And in the world of customer support, that's something that's been a little bit harder, right? Because to test a new channel or to test a new process, you've got to open a channel, hire a bunch of people for the channel, train those people for the channel. And that's, you know, at minimum, a two to four week experimentation loop, right? Yeah. What's really exciting about this generative AI enabled automation experience that we do mostly on voice and you do on voice is that you can spin up that workflow, turn it live. It takes a couple hours and you can start to say, hey, are we generating revenue from this new process or workflow and sort of get those instantaneous results and then make sort of that experimentation, testing loop, and ROI loop so much faster than it would be if it was all manual. Yeah, right. Just think about the, right, I'll give you an example, which is sort of a, a newer capability that we've started doing. When somebody called, right, number one call reason across retail and e-commerce this time of year, but like really always, is Wisma, yeah. right? Where, where's yep. my shit <laughs> that I paid you for? Um, yeah, when is it going to arrive? Uh, and, and there is like, Hey, somebody calls in, can you give them a good automated experience that solves that problem, gives them that information, right? So like, that would be, Hey, are we integrated into the source of truth where that information is? Hopefully Shopify, but it yep. could be somewhere else. Can you grab the tracking link? Can you sort of tell them what the status is? Maybe text them a link, uh, to their tracking page where they can sort of click into it and see it for themselves. The next layer on it, when you start to write, as you're saying, talk about 
driving business outcomes and experimenting with processes. The next layer that we've added onto this is the integration with the SMS marketing providers, uh, right? So Attentive is really the one that we're focused on right now. Yeah. And one of their like most utilized uh, flows and like experiences that they do inside of their platform and their programs is proactive delivery updates, right? It's like sign up for Attentive and one of the benefits that you're going to, right? Sign up for our SMS program and one of the benefits that you're going to yeah. get is proactive delivery updates. So if somebody's taking the time to call customer service to figure out where their stuff is, it's clearly like on their mind. It's something that matters to them. So yeah, you can solve the problem and check the box and automate the call by giving them the update and giving them a link. But if you can go another layer and you can say, hey, do you want to subscribe to our SMS program to get proactive delivery updates the rest of the way? You get a really high opt-in rate on that. And then guess what? CX can go to marketing, who's like all focused every day on how can I drive more and more sort of like list growth and get subscribers. And you can say, hey, I've got a pipeline of people that are super organically subscribing to SMS because they see real utility in it based on where they are in their journey. And that whole thing is done automatically. And to like try and take the agent's documentation and like work that in there, get them access to another system, deal with the like security components of it. Like it's infinitely easier to do yeah. that in an automated experience. And then there are things that are totally on the other side, right? Like I think that sales calls are, that's really hard, right? Like guiding somebody through a purchase is really hard. If they're calling, it's sensitive. Those are the yeah. highest stakes of calls. And like, that is like the bread and butter, like let's get them handed over to a sales expert on your team. I love it, but they're optimized. They're not doing that, you know, Wismo call. They're there for those high value calls and you can experiment there. That's awesome. Now, yeah. one last other thing, thing you talked about. Go ahead. Last thing ahead. Um, we have a couple of customers that, um, so I, I talked about like the, the super long-term paradigm shift is like, we want to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. What is sort of like a baby step in that direction is we've seen examples of customers that change the metrics that they use to judge the performance of their agents after implementing mm -hmm. automation. So okay. right now, everything is handle time, right? Like how many tickets are you doing in an hour? How many calls are you doing in an hour? Handle time, volume, drive it down, drive it down, drive it down. At the point when all the routine, simple things are being automated, the agent job yeah, changes. The... the agent job yeah. changes. And, and the metric that we've seen people start to gravitate towards is like really right, forgetting the handle time, judging agents on on CSAT. And I think the next step is judging agents. And we've got like one or two examples of this, at least that I've seen, like really judging agents on revenue contribution and yeah, being able so. to tie it back. So that, I mean, that's a cost center, profit center paradigm. I love it. Um, there's a lot more here that I don't think we're going to get to at all, but I love that you said, you know, smart, helpful, and fun, right? Because fun is the branding, but in order to deliver smart and helpful, it's a lot more than just generative AI. It's a lot more than just branding, right? The smart and helpful bit, I think I heard you say earlier, is all the integrations. It's really having policies, processes correctly hooked up. It's about having all the integrations. So it's not just a fun conversation, that's not why your customers are calling, yeah. but being really able to get in there and provide the information that the companies need or the consumers need as they're reaching out. Um, love that. Last words maybe on you know, future developments you see for voice technology and customer service. What does this look like in 12, 24 months? So just on that, so I agree with you 100% on the integration and we see like we're always adding new integrations. The average customer right now is like using Flip integrated with somewhere between like three and five other tools in their stack, which is just like a really large number. Um, in terms of where this is all going, I, I feel like, you know, like I think that we've hit on a lot of this. Um, yep. I think that to me, what's been so amazing about the chat GPT stuff of the last 12 months is it's taken 
so many people that were like non-believers and skeptics and thought that it was some distant out sci-fi thing. And yeah. it's flipped all of them into believers. And it is a, a like a huge, huge, huge amount of companies are sort of starting their AI journey right now. And and it's just a, it's an exciting time in the industry. And I think that um and I think that it's a really good thing and, and I'm excited to be a part of it and to see where it all goes. I'm super excited. Because I just think you're right. I think it was just taking what was math and then made it super practical and tangible and applicable where people could see and play with it. And I think yeah. that's what's driven a lot of the, the business change in the industry. All right, last little bit. Every week we do a rolling question. Yours is coming from our last guest, CX expert, Devlin O'Neill. And he would love to know what is your favorite way to sweat or what do you do to decompress from work? Um, my absolute favorite is a good hard tennis match and yeah. then like a really good meal afterwards. Like if I can, <laughs> no matter what headspace I'm in, if I can get two hours of tennis and some really good food, I will be a much happier and better person on the other side. <laughs> I love it. You got, you got to stay active to make the startup happen. Um, yeah. And then last parting question to you is what question would you like to ask our guest next session in 2024? Yeah. So a little bit of it will be on the other side of the holidays. I'm curious for the next guest, who in all of their holiday celebrations had the ugliest holiday sweater? I think we're going to need photos of that one, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, Brian, thank you so much. And everyone, thank you for tuning in to spend some time with us today to share your lunch hour with us. If you have any customer support questions, please reach out. If you want to know how to flip CX and take those high value calls, reach out to Brian. They're also at flipcx.com. And come join us for one last retail edition of Plain Speak on Wednesday, January 10th at 1 p.m. Eastern, where we'll be talking about tailored touches and how you can personalize service in formal wear rentals with Thomas Harden, Senior Director of Customer Care at the Black Tux. Thanks, everyone, so much. Enjoy your holiday season with family and friends, and we will see you guys in 2024.